I just upgraded from my TV from an old cheap Vizio that I got, I got eight years ago for $300. I think it was called the E50U D2 or something. And then the back of the day, it was a pretty good TV. You know, it was a 4K 60 FPS TV. But today we have upgraded to the LG C4, which is an OLED TV. So we're going from a VA TV to an OLED TV. So we're going to be talking about the experience of going from VA to OLED. Both of them are 4K FPS. But with this TV, we can go up to 144 hertz on it. We're going to talk about the quality of the image difference between these two. Because there's actually a significant amount of image difference between a cheaper VA panel and the newer OLED panel technology on these TVs. And also going to talk about the input delay of the TVs. And also going from 60 to 144 hertz on these TVs. How big of a difference it makes on there. So let's go into it. Now, before we get the important thing to keep in mind is that I'm going to try to demonstrate to you guys the difference between these two TVs. And in dark areas, you can really see the difference. But when it comes to the color and when it's a light scene, it's very hard to tell the difference on video. In real life, you do see a difference. But also keep in mind that if you go into a store, if you go into a Best Buy, Walmart or something, and you look at an OLED TV and a normal either LED, VA TV, they're all going to look very similar because you're only going to see the big difference between these two TVs in a dark room. So if you're in a store, if you're at a Best Buy, it's going to be very well lit. You know, those places, they always have like a bunch of bright lights around you so you're not going to be able to tell the difference you might be like oh OLED looks the same as my TV but until you get home you get into a dark room you're not going to see a huge difference so let's begin the video let's talk about why I went with the LG C4 now if you go online this is the number one TV people recommend mainly because you get the amazing 4k resolution with this TV you also get 120 FPS on here, but if you plug your computer into it, you can get up to 144 frames per second on this TV. And it's also at a great price also. Right now it's on sale during Black Friday. I got it for a thousand bucks, a 48 inch version. If you want, you can go with a 55, 65 inch, whatever you want. I'll have a link for it in the description. I'm not sponsored by LG, but I am an Amazon affiliate, so I will get a little bit of kickback if you buy it through my link. Now let's talk about the image quality difference between these two TVs. Right here I have the old Vizio TV on here. And the thing I want to say is that you're going from 4K resolution to 4K resolution, you know, you're going to be keeping the same amount of resolution, same amount of pixels on there, but it makes such a huge difference when you have either a video game or a movie that is rated for HDR. So right now, as you can see, on this old TV, it's going to be just standard dynamic range on here. And especially on a game like this, that is a darker game, a horror game, it makes a giant difference. So let's switch over to the new TV. And as you can see, the colors just pop so much more on here. Like you just walk around the areas that are supposed to be dark are just pure darkness. And then the parts that are lighting up are just like blasting out of the TV. I mean... It's it's on these video footage you can see it, but in person it's even a bigger difference on there. Now to demonstrate, let's go into this dark room in Silent Hill 2. You know, as you can see, we're going to like an orange light in there into a super dark room. And as you can see, all the dark areas are kind of gray. Especially in person, you can really see it. Now that when we go into the newer TV with the OLED, you can see all the dark areas just are pure dark. Well, the light up parts, they light up and then you walk into a dark room and it actually looks like you're walking into a dark room. I mean, it's a huge difference on there. Another great example is going to be Cyberpunk 2077. As you can see right here, we're playing on 4K maxed out graphics on there, but we're just using standard definition on old TV. And as you can see, the colors don't really pop out that much. This is a dark scene on here. It's nighttime. And all the dark areas are kind of washed out looking on there. Now we go into the <laughs> HDR on the OLED TV. I mean, just look at the reflections off of the car right here. I mean, God, it makes a huge difference on a game like this. You look at it, you just walk around. All the colors pop so much. Like, you, you don't really understand. When you have a game washed out, a lot of the colors just don't pop. And as you can see here, every color is just popping out all the neon signs in the game look like actual neon signs on there and you know what let's go into our car right here because this is another great example of 
how amazing this game looks here with the and this game has great hdr settings too like a lot of games will say it'll have hdr but it'll just give you like a slider of you know brightness on there but this game gives you options of hdr i think pk and then get hdr srgb which is going to be the difference between 10 bit versus 16 bit colors on there and you can see my amazing drive in there but just look at this just look at the buildings over there Oh my god, I'm a terrible driver. They fix a lot in this game, but the driving controls are still not the best. But you walk around, you look inside the car, like it's complete dark, except like the, you know, all the accessories inside of it just lighting up on there. All the buildings lighting up. I mean, it just looks incredible. But there are some games where it doesn't really make that big of a difference. Right here, we have Red Dead Redemption 2 fully maxed out on here. And one thing to keep in mind is that this game I can run well over 60 FPS, but since this TV only supports 60 FPS, we're stuck with it. And as you can see, we have a high contrast area in this game, and it, it looks beautiful. And this is on the old TV. Here I go swimming in the game, and you can see that it's a little washed out on there. We could have more dynamic range on there, but either way, it looks beautiful on my old TV on, on there. Now let's switch over to the new TV. And when we get to the LG OLED, as you can see, it's not a giant difference. There's definitely a little bit more of a contrast and colors on here. But still, it's not a huge difference. And I did set up like the HDR on there. I went back and forth online trying to figure out if I even have it configured correctly. Because honestly, it doesn't make a huge difference on a game like this. And that's mainly because... A lot of when it comes to HDR, it's it's complicated. Some games do it perfectly well, like Silent Hill 2 does it amazingly. Cyberpunk does it great. But some games, even though they support HDR, it doesn't really look that much different than regular <laughs> definition. And some games just don't even really need HDR to begin with. Like if you're playing a game like the Yakuza game on there, I mean... It looks great either way, but the thing that you will really take advantage of on a game like this is that you're going to get the 144 frames per second. Now, this is the new Yakuza where it's, you know, turn-based, so it doesn't really matter frame rate that much. But if you're playing a more action-based game, getting that 144 hertz, I mean, is amazing on here. Now, to be honest, in most games, if you get over 60 FPS, it's not a huge deal. But if you're playing a game like Call of Duty, for example, then the 144 hertz is quite amazing on there. To be honest with the, even with Call of Duty, I think like 100 FPS is pretty good on there. Anything above that, I don't really see that much of a difference. I guess if you're like a competitive player, it would benefit you a lot. But, you know, if you have it, then use the 144 hertz, you know. But that's only on the PC. You got to keep that in mind. If you're playing console, it's limited to 120 FPS. And that's mostly because consoles can't do more than 120 FPS. At least for now. Maybe in the future with PlayStation 6. Or maybe they'll do a PlayStation 5 Pro 2. Where you get 10% better performance. But you get you know HDMI 2.1. Where you'll be able to do 144 FPS. But to be honest, anything over 60 FPS, I'm happy with. Now, one thing that's perfect with this TV is going to be the input delay. Now, a lot of times when you're playing on a TV, it will have significant amount of input delay. I couldn't figure out how much it was on my older TV because there isn't much documentation. But with the, the VA panels, they're usually at least around 8 to 10 milliseconds of delay from when you press a button. And when you play a competitive game, like I play Street Fighter pretty competitively on there you know having a 10 millimeter second delay can make a huge difference and with the oled tv you get i think it's like 0.1 milliseconds so you pretty much get no input delay and you really feel that they like playing any competitive you know fighting game or shooting game you really get those like instant inputs on there that make a huge difference when you're playing it on your tv normally a lot of people just end up using a monitor for that stuff but when you have an amazing, super fast TV like that, you can just sit on the couch and get that, you know, super fast reaction times. And the cool thing is that, like, this TV kind of brings new life to older games also. You know, I was thinking about it. I'm like, all right, what game would look good on this TV on here? I need something dark, gritty, and I'm like, all right, Batman, Arkham Knight, that is, like, the perfect game for this right here. And as you guess, I got it running on my PC, 144 hertz on their 4K with, you know, 
I mean, it just looks beautiful on there. This game already looked amazing, you know, back in the day. But even today, you're playing this on OLED now with this whole, like, dark scenery of the Arkham City. I mean, it looks just incredible on there. I mean, just look at this right here. I think it's a little bit out of focus, so it's sharper in real life. But it just, all the colors of the city just pop on there. And now I was like doing like a little bit of a test. So I was doing co-op with my girlfriend. We were playing Suicide Squad on there. I'm on the right playing on my VA monitor on their social wide monitor. And on the left, she's playing on the OLED TV. Now keep in mind, on the left, we're playing on the PlayStation 5, a $500 console. And on the right, we're playing on a $3,000 computer with every setting maxed out on there. And I kind of like the image better on the left on there. The colors just pop a lot more on the OLED TV. So even though you're running the game at a lower resolution on the PlayStation 5, you know, without the settings maxed out on there, it actually looked better than playing it on the computer with maxed out graphics just because of the panel itself. Now, obviously, when I connect my computer to my TV, then I get best of the both worlds. But that's important to keep in mind, you know, just when you have a good panel, it, it gives a new life to your older consoles and games on there where it looks better than what it look would look like if you have a high-end PC. So it's pretty crazy. So at the end, is there any negatives to owning an OLED TV? Now, one thing that, you know, people are scared of is the OLED burn-in. If you have any logos or text that are always on screen, sometimes the logos will burn into it supposedly. But from what I have seen and heard with these LG OLEDs, people haven't had many of those issues. But I do recommend just getting like an extended warranty on these TVs. A person that got like an extended four-year warranty on the TV for like, I think it was like an extra $100 or something. Just to have the peace of mind so that I don't have to worry about it. But when it comes to any problems with the TV itself, honestly, the only problem... I have been having with these OLED TVs is going to be that when you watch stuff that are, you know, proper HDR, they look amazing on the TV. And then your eyes get used to it. And then you go to play or watch something that's in standard dynamic range or just not properly done in HDR. And when you watch those stuff, they, they really do bug you. Where you look at it, you're like, oh, this doesn't look right. So then you go into the menu and you're like messing around with the settings to like try to get it right. And with these TVs, you can really mess with it. Like you can just open up the settings on here by pressing the settings button. And then from there, you can, you know, you can adjust, you know, the brightness of the pixels. You can adjust the dark levels on there. You can really mess with the settings on this TV and then... You know, besides just watching a show or while playing a game, now you're spending 10, 20 minutes just adjusting the color profiles to have it look, you know, the perfect way the, the artist intended it to do. And then that ends up being too much work. With my older TV, I just watch stuff or I just play a game. I just turn it on and I'm like, all right, that looks pretty good. Now with this stuff, I'm like, all right, I have to adjust it because I know in my hand I can it can look better. But besides that, I mean, it's a great TV. I'm not going to complain about it. Everything on it pretty much looks better than how it looked on my older TV. Or at least the same part because they're both 4K televisions. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully it was useful. If you're, it's your first time buying an OLED TV or if you're upgrading from a different OLED TV, let me know in the comments section below. If you have any questions, let me know. Also, I answer everyone's questions. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. And if you're thinking about buying an LG OLED TV... I have links for it in the description. Again, I'm not sponsored, but I do have affiliate codes where I can make some money from it. So if you want to support the channel, if you enjoyed this video, buy it through my links on there. And we're also very close to getting 500 subscribers on this channel. So if you could just give me a subscription, I would appreciate it. I'm a smaller content creator. So that'll be great to do. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video, and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.